Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Jens Heitland Show, where I interview experts from different fields to connect the dots of innovation and entrepreneurship. Today's guest is Partner at Kandel, the multidisciplinary engineering company. Please welcome to the show, Duncan Cox. Hello, Duncan. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Doing really well today, Jens. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a really pleasure to have you. It's, I'm really looking forward to our conversation, talking about innovation and, of course, sustainability. Of course. Yeah. But before we go into, into the topics, into the depth of that, tell us a little bit about who is Duncan and how did you become who you are today? Bit of a journey, but it's, um, I won't bore you with the, the, the early years of, of Duncan. <laughs> Yeah, how do I get here today? Well, I, I've, I've been on a journey, I would suggest, from you know, since leaving university and going through all the chartership stuff you know, in the early years of career. Um, and then I think a few years ago, I, I followed my passion for sustainability. Um, and the nice thing I found with the Kundal is that I've been able to do that. And we, we sort of set up an internal group in the, in the office. Um, about sustainability within the business and then a couple of years ago we ran something called the Kundal Diploma which looked at all the aspects of sustainability in its widest sense and, and really helped me to move forwards and understand um, sustainability in its biggest context and I think so I am an engineer I'm a structural engineer that is my job title I suppose I'm a partner of the business I own um, part of all this um, but I'm also um, a passionate sustainability um, advocate and, and want to see and enable others to, uh, to, um, to live more sustainably. Um, I think I'm an engineer and I think um, some people get caught up, particularly when structural engineers start talking, they kind of glaze over um, uh, and we start talking about beams and columns. And I've had some very interesting conversations over the years uh, with people who really didn't want me to talk about beams and columns. But, um, I've moved on and I think beams and columns are part of the solution, but beams and columns are part of buildings and buildings are um, problems and, and challenges in themselves that need, need solutions. Um, but buildings also then sit in places and places also benefit from different and innovative and sustainable solutions um, and the places between buildings and then um, that the whole ecosystem of of place, um, and I think engineers um, and all creative um, designers have a huge contribution to make. Um, so that for me is 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 kind of why I love engineering. Why that is very much part of yeah. who I am. Yeah. How, how did you get the passion of sustainability? Was it like since childhood? Or how how did this evolve over time? Um, I think it, it started from a chapter called Dave Clark, who ironically you've met. Um, <laughs> and his passion um, was uh, sort of in, in conversation, one-to-one, uh, -one, because he's now in Australia, but he was, he was in Newcastle for, um, and, and the UK for a bit. And we're just chatting about the, um, and, and, and catching the, the energy um, and the importance. And this was, what, 15, 18 years ago when, we were, when hearing him speak. And just thinking, actually, this is so important. Um, and and then as as you go forwards and meet other people in, in the business and speak to others, um, you really understand the importance. You understand um, just the huge weight that this generation carries for the generations to follow, and 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 that just generates its own passion um, and and passion that I have professionally, but also passion that I have personally as well. Yeah. If we, if we just give the people who have never heard about Kundal a little bit of understanding what Kundal is. Um, I'm sure you can Google us if you need to, but effectively <laughs> Kundal are um, multidiscipline engineers. So we're everywhere from the UK to Australia. Um, sadly, not in the US at the minute, although I think we do have lots of US clients and, and um, are, would be known over there in some, um, some circles. But um, yeah, I think we, everything engineering, a um, little bit of planning sprinkled in occasionally, um, and, but, but generally anything in engineering. So I talk to 
fire engineers and lighting engineers and um, you know acoustics and and it's just fantastic to hear these sort of different specialists and and some of the um, great stuff that they they get to work on and you get to um, hear clever stuff all the time it's great yeah how does how does sustainability and innovation play a role in in that business as well and then as wider than the business i think it's central um to what we do um obviously we have just launched this this initiative the zero carbon design initiative which really seeks to take what is a um has been a specialist role where we, we have specialist um and um, design um sustainability uh, engineers um, and professionals um, and in some parts of the world australia and, and and we are actually known for purely for the sustainability element hmm. um but we've always known that that's it's more than that um and so sustainability is um needs to work through everything we do and everything we are and zero carbon design is about bringing that um and and upskilling and enabling um everybody um everywhere on every project to um be able to work um on zero carbon projects and to help their clients and their teams to create zero carbon projects um at, by 2030 and indeed um, as soon as possible, because it needs yeah. to be as soon as possible. So, if I understand you right, you you do that in in a different than a different way than I've heard in other companies where they have a specific department which is only doing sustainability, and the others do the other things. So, you kind of do that throughout the whole business. Yeah. So we we think about who what we do. Um, mm -hmm. So we have teams from a, across the business in every office um, who look at look inwards and look at what we do and so we we try and be as sustainable as we can be um but we also have specialists who who can can guide and enable all of us to do and, and think more sustainably but because we then have the wider teams who who are um engine design engineers in their own specialisms um we are um enabling them to be more sustainable in what they do um, and some been some fascinating conversations that have come out of zero carbon design, eye-opening moments, light light bulbs, if you like, where you know, I've had civil engineers say, "Oh, we've never even thought about asking about the embodied carbon involved in um, in in this, and the data's not there because no one's ever asked." Hmm. And I just think it's fascinating that that, that those things, first of all, it's never been asked before, but actually that that we've got people getting excited about. The difference that they can make, and that's what you know, I know. I'm, I'm really excited about this initiative that we're running. Yeah. If we if we take it outside of Candle and look at the broader perspective, the industry and the changes in the world through, through sustainability, what do you think are innovative approaches that need to happen to get zero carbon and need to get like not just one company, one building, uh, a couple of buildings, so a whole industry into that direction. It just gets so exciting when we start talking about that. The the potential. Um, we 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 have a core team, and the core team sort of work through the advocates to the business, and very much the conversation is very much that actually the business can influence and inform all the design teams that they work on, hmm. um, and actually if you can inform and educate and and enable those design teams. Everybody gets better, and actually, you, you you generate that benefit through the whole the whole ecosystem, the whole planet. If um, by sharing and developing and 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 and, and enabling and exciting. Yeah, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Might yes, start one again. <laughs> I think it's for, for me. It's also wider than 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 candle, of course. Mm, uh, absolutely. And and because we we have chatted about it, I know that candle is doing amazing work in that. If you take it outside, what do you think needs to happen in the industry um, to get it even further? It's like mm. one thing is like you, you guys in Candle take it to the next level and work really hard on it, empowering the whole organization to do it. And most probably through that, your clients and the people in your ecosystem. But how do you see sustainability impacting and the impact of sustainable movements in the world? I can see some really inspired 
uh, individuals um, reaching out to the people they know. Um, Brian Kilkelly, who you've had on 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 here um, before, mm -hmm. was talking about creating a network, which I'm really excited to be um, talking to him about. Um, where reaching out to every small and medium-sized business um, to inform them and educate them about how sustainability might influence them um, and not not so much the technical but in how it might inf in, impact their business model um, because actually it might not be relevant in 10 years time because if, with, if climate change continues the way it is their business will be fundamentally um, different or won't be relevant anymore um, now so that's one end of it. I, I've seen, I've had some fascinating conversations with some of the money people, where where sustainability um, and and the importance of in, um, investing in sustainable um, futures is massively more important than than it was probably even three years ago. Um, and and the way that people assess that and the way people think about that um, is 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 just um really exciting right now um so i think the money tends to influence how people think mm. um and where they get the money from as people change their emphasis in terms of where that what, what the priority is in terms of the money the the importance of sustainability um in people's general thinking is 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 increasing Three, four, five, tenfold, um, and and it, and it is, and so that in itself is then changing the ecosystems that people operate in, um, and it is. It's the whole ecosystem. It's not just um, you know the the primary um, the con primary consumer. It is you know it's it's about all those who who their supply chains and their advisors, um, you know, and 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 the, and the people who use their services. So it everybody is, is 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 changing their perspective and it is that change of perspective that step change that that, that is so important for everybody right now yeah how important and and how do you see innovation playing a role in that i think innovation is actually absolutely central innovators and innovation and and um the entrepreneurs who are thinking about not only new um, technology and, and new um, uh, sort of um, new ways of thinking, but also um, applying technology that already exists in new ways, I think is that's what the exciting things, the whole um, NHS testing process of, of where they were looking at um, how they might combat, combat COVID. You know, they tried a, a myriad of different things and they, and they found you know, innovative drug treatments because they were prepared to try things because they had to. But in the same way, we're in that we're in a we're in a global challenge situation, which calls for us to be different and innovative and applying just creative solutions wherever they come from. Um, and um, and I think that's really exciting because you can you can where where a waste product from one business or one industry can be applied to to the to the use of others um, makes things more efficient makes things more sustainable again because if you can look at an ecosystem as opposed to one building or one business how does it work how do you work in the, in the wider ecosystem that is how we're going to achieve the step changes that we need to achieve yeah what is was is fascinating with what you just said is if if we just compare innovation and and the innovation speed we gained in the drug treatment and the the whole pandemic sometimes it feels to me it's like hey climate change is happening in maybe not in the same speed but it's way bigger than than this pandemic it just feels not like it's not there not everyone feels it in that way so sometimes i'm saying hey we need sometimes you need to push people really to to figure out how to, how to innovate um, instead of, yeah, there's a global climate crisis we have in front of us and it's not too far away and we can't wait. We need to innovate in the same speed like we innovate with with the pandemic. But it's 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 for me always fascinating that it's it's slightly different treated. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, Simon did a talk um, that, that's on the Kundal website. If people want to look it up. But the um, and he and what he did was what what does it what does it what does an emergency look like? Mm. And and he put two graphs up, um, and both both were um, log, sort of logarithmic sort of um, um, graphs, and and one was the was the rise in COVID cases, mm. it went like that, and it went obviously it went very very fast in a very short period of time, mm. and the other one which he put alongside it was the CO two parts per million in the atmosphere, which also does that, yeah. it just happens to do it over a longer period. And it's what 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 does what does an emergency look like? They are the same. Hmm. We are an emergency, and 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 it, and it was a, it was a really powerful way of communicating that particular issue. Um, and and I, you know I think now um, you know, lots and lots of people have got it. Not everybody, but lots of people understand that. But it was it was a good graphic. Uh, graphical yeah. like that example. It's it 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 makes things things like comparable. Hmm. But for for me, it's, it's it's always fascinating to 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 see these things happening or not happening. What an, another part to that point is, and what was also interesting to see that across the world, it's like all scientists flock together and and work together and build on on top of each other. It was not in silos. So that's another thing um, which I think we could do better if we look towards climate change. I know there's a lot of things happening already. But if you just imagine if people who are like yourself, engineers in construction, working with finance people in the same room on a day-to-day -day base, imagine what would, what could happen. Uh, what, you know, some of the biggest um, challenges we face in, in innovative thought is is when you when you get to the position where you're then trying to build it and you've got a legal issue or an insurance issue or a financial yeah. issue. And which means that you you can't do that. Well, but we need to well, no, it, it, the, the book says. And and what we need is innovative thinking and 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 and, and who uh, within those industries, which are you know hugely important, absolutely fundamental to business. Hmm. But we need to take the set change there as well because actually. Um, That's when we, we 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 truly move forwards. Is when we can truly move forwards together. And and that is for you know communicators and creatives to to help those uh, in those industries to understand that, that that that's that's the job. You know we, we've got to communicate. We've got to enable because why why would people help? Um, why would why would people do something if they don't understand? Um, so. Yeah, that, that's part of the job ticket is to, to just to try and um, help um, others who, who aren't specialists in yeah. engineering or, or or design to understand how they can help. Yeah, what what I like about that thinking is, I mean, you do that inside of Candle, which, like you said, with the empowerment enabling everyone to mm -hmm. contribute. I think we as society need to as well take it to the next level where we said we discussed it last summer. Um, like how do we work with schools in a different way, enabling the kids of today's already taking taking sustainability at the forefront? And I know a lot of young people are doing that already, but I think we as a society can 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 do more because it's 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 every small step into that direction that helps us to get there. It's it's a huge thing that we're not that we're missing as society. Um, the the Head of Newcastle uh, Transport um, um, made a comment in a, in a workshop I was at the other day, and and he said, unless you earn more than thirty thousand pounds, you cannot afford to own a car and leave it on the drive. Hmm. So what you know, I I am, am blessed with earning a few more quid than that, and I can afford to leave my car on the drive and cycle to work. Hmm. If you You know, so so there are there are vast swathes of of the community who have no choice. They cannot afford to make you know sustainable choices. Um, and for me, that if, if I was to try and do something for everybody, it's trying to uh, enable everybody to actually be able to make 
sustainable choices than not in the lifestyle yeah. um you know there's there's the the table there's maslow's hierarchy of need again one for google if anybody doesn't know what that is <laughs> but, the, but the bottom you know the bottom level is all about the fundamentals of life having enough food yeah. um yeah and and then you go into security and then and but at the very top is kind of self-actualization being the best that you could possibly be and i think for a lot of people the self-actualization is about well i'm going to live as sustainably as i can mm. and that follows on from when everything else is sorted but actually we need to be encouraging people to think that living sustainability is is needs to be a fundamental of our security very much a, a cornerstone of what we do because if we don't there are going to be dire consequences you know the governmental um report the first chapter that we all got um uh, very recently was was pretty damning <laughs> um you know and and the, the very real risk is we're not going to make one and a half degrees um if we don't all pull together we're not going to get two globalized levels of it, 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 you know I don't want to be a doomsayer, and and, and actually, to be fair, that the, the report doesn't doesn't say we're not. It does. It's very clear we're not all doomed. We can make a difference. We yeah. we are. Um, we can control what happens to us, um, and 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 we can solve this, but we need to do it together, and we need to do it now. Yeah, and and I think that's that's important on a personal level. You need to do it on a day by day by day basis, and then the system needs to allow it. One example is, and we lived in in Copenhagen, in Denmark, and and in in Sweden before in Malmo. We haven't owned and 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 driven a, a driven a car for was it three years, and then wow. we moved back to Germany, and we're kind of forced to have a car because we're the the system here is not built in that way. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of a little bit in the outskirts of of the city. And yes, there is a bus, but the bus is going like every 45 minutes. So if you want to to take the bus to get to the next city, it takes you always an hour. And it's yeah. it, it, it's almost if I'm going running, it's faster. So so if, yeah. if we just compare that to, to Denmark um, and Sweden, where we lived in and, and really have seen it and experienced it, not owning a car, it works perfectly. The, yeah. the, the, the bus is coming every every. 10 minutes every 15 minutes and of course different size of uh, cities as well but still this system is built to enable that um having bigger Fair bike enough. parkings all of it so yeah. it's enabling it yeah, absolutely it's about enabling sustainable lifestyles um, making it possible for people to live sustainably um and it, it, again the pandemic was an interesting one for us as a family because um we we had the whole conversation about cars And it worked out we needed about 1.8 of a car before the pandemic hmm. um, because my wife needed one to get to work wherever she um, um, uh, she works in a, a couple of schools. Um, and I needed mine and I worked out that I, I needed it a few days a week. Um, with the pandemic, we we asked us, we just asked ourselves, do we need do we still need that? Do we and my wife said, well, actually, I can I can cycle to work. So and I was like, well, do I actually need the car four days a week? Well, actually, no, I don't. And right. um, so we went from needing 1.8 of a car to about 0.2 of a car in terms of, you know, and, and, so, and so all of a sudden it's like, well, so we'll sell a car then. And so we did. But, so, but sometimes it needs it needs us to take a step back and go and reevaluate. Because if we don't, if if we don't have a reason to change our to change what we do we'll just keep doing what we've always done and i think yeah so that's the other thing is is is, is not just enabling it but also then giving giving a reason for people to think differently yeah um, and that might be everything from a tax break to a, a um, to i don't know to something else but it just or even listening to this podcast you, you never know Jens. you know do, the, maybe just thinking actually do i need to have a second car do i need to have a car at all yeah. um yeah we would love to give it away honestly we just discussed it last weekend i said it's like hey it's we do, i don't really want to have a car but then it's yeah but we can't go here and we can't go there it's like it's almost in, in, impossible to get somewhere 
Mm. Um, so he's there. Okay, let's keep it at least for a little. And, then, and I think that's the part. We need to create solutions and opportunities to say it's easier to not have a car. If mm. we get towards that level, then people will as well not do it. Because for me, it's not a status symbol for I'm living in Germany for a lot of people. It is, <laughs> I can tell you, no. um, but it's, yeah, it, it's, it's really important to, to get into that and look into how, how do we solve that as a society going forward? So I would like to take, take a turn into combining digital and sustainability in mm. construction. And we have talked a little bit about that before. So, um, you talked about management of spaces. Can you give us a little bit of more details about that thinking and what's going on in that space? So digital is one of the big areas that Kundal have, have, have talked about for, for a number of years internally. And, and, and we find that ability to um, use a lot of sort of scripting. Um, so we um, use Rhino and Grasshopper to sort of write scripts, which allow us to look at um, in lots of ways, look at um, automating what we do or parts of what we do, um, but also then looking at multitudes of solutions um, in, in a far shorter time. And that um, the idea is to optimize the process, but also optimize design. And if you optimize design, you can optimize carbon and, 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 and that side of things. So one one example um, I was showing the other day um, was, was this um, uh, scripting based tool that looked at civil master planning of of, of a housing estate. Hmm. So you know we, we're putting on um, drawing on a road and and the and the, based on certain um, the, sort of the processes that were were and, and and requirements that were set and rules that were set. We could auto create a housing estate in its layout in terms of the ratios between houses and gardens and suds ponds and all that sort of stuff. And then the output would also allow us to establish the enabled car the, the, the embodied carbon of the whole thing hmm. in terms of that initiative, in terms of that that particular iteration. And 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 actually looking then at well, if you then look evaluated what the embodied carbon is was, was for that. And then ran it again and again and again and again. You could you could create a situation where you you could optimize um, the 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 embodied carbon associated with, with with the project. So that's just one application. But we're doing that um, in all sorts of ways. The other one, the, um, chatting to um, one of our uh, Dan Bennett, who heads up our sort of controls um, building group. We're looking at how we use um sensors in spaces to create smart buildings mm. and actually if you can understand how people use their building by uh, by using the sensors to understand how they move through the space whether how, where they occupy the patterns of use and living um you can optimize the design of that space in ways that um you never knew and weren't and and you can you can create better spaces for the people who are in them, um, spaces they feel healthier to be in, spaces that work more efficiently because you've optimized the, the travel distances and the interactions with different people. And all of this is coming out of this fascinating digital journey. But it, but obviously, as it crosses, it, it's when that digital sort of crosses over and meets the sustainability that you you, you you really look at some you know, exciting things that, that that are so innovative that they they they, they change the course of design. Um, and so you know, I'd love to say I had something to do with it, but it, but the, these are it's just it's it's great to be part of a business where we've got those sort of um, exciting things and 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 really exciting people um, and hearing about these great things going on. And that's just just a fab thing to be part of really yeah and it's 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 fascinating when you when you when you think about the digital world if you let's say take google amazon it's like they do this on a day to day to day to day oh. base or yeah. facebook it's like they look into what are the user data how do they walk in their house which is like the digital box mm. um 
and then they they're taking that oh we learned this they're all going this way so let's help them to do that easier so it's 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 a similar way of thinking using the digital landscape and then kind of testing and and getting the data in to be able to do it better and then like you said it's more importantly even doing the doing it more sustainable so how can we do that with the sense of let's focus on sustainability and bring that into the sustainability goal perspective of a project and i think that's 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 fascinating to to see that's moving um that will change most probably the the processes the industry in the future it's one of the biggest challenges that we 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 always go on about and, and different businesses approach, go about things in different ways but data you you know you, you know the, there are there's data that we 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 look we hold on to um that probably is vital we do um but certainly we 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 hold on to data about how we use our buildings because because um you know, people are very protective about get things getting out there about how bad things actually are or how inefficient they might be yeah. um and so it you know but actually if we've got systems that we can actually um you know, we can um we know we understand what's actually going on we can create a situation where we can do it far more efficiently mm -hmm. um our um our team um alan fogarty and his team have been sort of looking at working for um the world government and 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 edu it's, it's interesting actually the education seems to be leading the way you've talked about schools being so important before and we're looking at actually the designing again it's the crossover to digital digital design in such a way of, of at a level of detail where actually it, it is accurate enough that you get an accurate model of what's going on not just yeah. an indicative model of what's going on so that if you then combine that with how the building works when it's actually running you you can find where the gaps are and you can find that an attenuator is not tuned properly or um I, I get in trouble if i start talking about m e things that, that, <laughs> but but you by building models that that, that that accurately reflect things and having sensors within spaces you can create those better spaces healthier spaces more sustainable spaces it's it's so important i would like to get into the last part of the podcast um, which is where I take a couple of questions outside of the context. Question number one is, if you have the possibility to work in a project or lead a project that's impacting every human being on earth, what project would you choose to work and why? Small it's one. a huge one. Um, <laughs> I think I would build on what, what I said was mentioning before. I think, um, you you talk about a lot about entrepreneurship in, in, in and I think and we've had the conversation about um in, encouraging entrepreneurs and 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 opening people's eyes to to what they could do and I think linking in with what I was saying before about um the the ability to enable people in um who who are um in um, more challenged uh, financial position to actually live sustainably um, through entrepreneurship programs, through education programs, through just enabling lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. That for me would be, you know, that would help us to achieve the step change that we need to achieve as, as, as a planet. Um, I don't know how you do it right now, but but that but the but that would be a fascinating journey to support and enable because it's all very well sort of standing in our ivory towers and saying you should but you know we need to enable the whole of our societies to live more sustainably yeah great one where will you be in a year from now and you can answer that from a personal and or business perspective where will I be for a year from now? Um, I'd like to think, um, well, zero carbon design perspective would be nice. I think because by this time next year, um, we want to have established a zero carbon 
pathway for every project that we do. So we're not saying every project will be zero carbon. I, I think that is, you know, that's not realistic in the time scale, but mm. to have created an opportunity where the people that the people and the clients, our teams, not just not just Candle people, but 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 are the the people we are engaged with, and the businesses that we we support and uh, and work alongside, um, have a pathway for all their buildings, all their projects, whether it be an in infrastructure, um, a school, or a office, or an airport, that all they could all be zero carbon in design, um, and that for me. In a year, if I um, uh, in a year's time, it, it, I think we're actually saying the end of 2022. But we, we, that's where I want to be in a, in a year's time. Great. How how do you how do you keep yourself informed and up to date on topics that interest you? The, the various ways. I think um, I, as I've already said, I've got uh, fortunately a, a whole bunch of interesting people that I work with. So often listening to them is really helpful. Um, I think I, um, oh, oh we, we, we have a, we have a subscription to an online newspaper, which I won't mention, but that who, who have quite a, um, a good, um, sustainability page. So I sort of, I try and I keep on, on, online, um, and update up to date with that. Um, less so in terms of, um, blogs, I, uh, I have looked for um, a good podcast talking about sustainability. I've seen some interesting ones about clothes and fashion and things, but I haven't. I've never quite found one that um, really hits that hits the spot. And uh, I'm still working on maybe, maybe actually maybe Candles can do that one um, for the future to help others. That would be an interesting one. Um, I'm also involved in this urban innovation thing, which I find fascinating um, mm -hmm. and really um, exciting conversation pieces to be ha having there. Um, and yeah, speaking to um, heads of business um, and um, speaking to the cleaner about what's what's important to him. You know, I, I just talk to a lot of people and, and, and hear their perspective, I think, is really uh, how I try and keep up to speed with things. Yeah. Great. Duncan, very, very great conversation. Thank you much for being on the show. Thanks for your time, Jens. Great to what be here. It's a pleasure. Thanks for listening to today's episode. You will find the links and resources in the show notes of this episode. If you would like to support the podcast, the most impactful thing you can do is subscribing to the show on any of the podcasting platforms and give me a review. This will help me to reach more innovators around the world and bring some of you into the show. If you have any question to the guest or want to engage with me, feel free to reach out to me on my public WhatsApp at plus four nine one five one seven zero three three one one seven six. I will repeat plus four nine one five one seven zero three three one one seven six. It's all WhatsApp texting only or follow me on social media and contact me there. And finally, if you look for someone educating you or your team on innovation culture coaching, have a look at heightlandinnovation.com. Thanks and see you in the next episode.